This is a stack of remnants from dizzy turnings I've done. I believe there's 19 pieces here. I have matching thicknesses on each side of this piece of wind gay. They're about 11 inches long and then there's maybe five types of wood in there. I know I have a walnut and purple heart and maple paduk in that wind gay. And that's all I'm going to use. I'm just going to use these scraps and see what I can make out of it. Okay, I'm going to get this glued together. So that's about it. I'm going to let that sit. Here's the piece. Uh, I cleaned it up, I jointed it, and planed it down to a parallel thickness. I have four holes drilled in it. I'll scribe circles on there. Cut these out. I'm going to set it up on my bandsaw sled that I made for slicing these pieces off and rotating them. So right now I have these discs uh, double sticky taped and dabs of hot glue holding them onto these pieces of plywood. I have the two smaller ones on one piece of plywood and then the biggest one is on a piece of plywood which is screwed to my bandsaw sled that I made just for making thin slices for making dizzy turnings. Right here is a ball bearing that's on my stop. It's adjustable by moving this fence but once I get it for the thickness I want then I'm going to leave it there and just slide the next piece up against it until it barely touches that bearing and the thicknesses will be very consistent. It's a slow process, you got to go pretty slow. So I'm going to just maybe cut one or two. I'll get the rest of them cut and we'll come back and glue them together. Okay, let's go ahead and cut one. I slice all these discs, I have them lined up the way I want them to twist. They're on a half inch dowel. This also lets me put a pin through here to align them. So I'm hoping that I can get the glue between all of them, clamp it down, and they stay in place. The nail hole is inside of where my turning will be. So I'm hoping that's going to work. I'll go ahead and get them sandwiched. I'll get them in here. I'll get a board on top and then I'll clamp them. Almost any time you cut through with any kind of a saw, it'll leave a little teeny burr on the end of it. So what I do is I take it on this flat paper And there it is, a decent glue joint. So that's what I do to prep them for gluing. So here is the beginning of the dizzy turning here. And this is a piece of Peruvian walnut that I glued onto here. This is just a piece that I use to apply pressure against it. I'm going to turn it around, then I'll turn a tenon on it. Then I'll flip it around and put it in the jaws of the chuck and start gluing the rest of the dizzy turning onto this piece. It's bowl gouge and round this up. Based on my sketch, we're going to go ahead and take this down and blend it.
I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole through this section here. So I have that line right here at two inches and based off of my sketch that's how big of an opening that will need. So now I'm going to turn this away and blend it in and glue the last section on it. So now what I like to do while I can still reach in and it's not too far is to sand the last section I put on. Here's the last piece that goes on. And you can see the pattern I have here. And it's symmetrical from that center line. The pieces that are on here are from the same blank. They are as well. What I do is I look for this pattern here and I'm picking this wider dark piece. It's Wenge. I'll put this on here and just barely touch it. I'll look down. Here's that same Wenge. If I rotate to that, you can see the pieces next to it are lining up. And if I come over here, they're lining up. So by rotating that same direction, I'll get that pattern to go all the way up here. No matter what shape I turn it on, we'll have that pattern going up. And I'll glue it on. Those corners look good. And these corners look good. All right. Lucky. I'll be back in a couple hours. Okay, I've got the steady rest set up. I'm going to drill a hole through here and finish shaping the inside. And they will have to make a row of segments for the top. Got almost a thousand RPMs here. So now I'm cutting the segments for the top ring. I'm making them out of Peruvian walnut. There's 18 segments. Each angle is cut at 10 degrees. Now I glue them together using a hose clamp. The wedgie sled made perfect joints. Now I'm getting ready to glue this ring to the top of that turning. This has centered it now so it really doesn't matter where it lands. There's nothing to key into this dizzy turning, but we'll look for the best looking spot. Now I'm just going to advance the spindle up against it. I like to give my joints a small little twist to make sure it's seated good. I think that's good right there. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some clamping pressure. Let that sit overnight and uh, probably can finish this tomorrow. Now it's time to trim this rim to the inside, face it off, finish sanding it, and get set up to finish the outside. To start out in reverse here, so I'll want to sand on this side. I am ready.
ready to turn the rest of the outside. What I have here is a block of wood with a little taper cut on it. It'll go in here and it'll just find, find its own location on that inside. This is on a, an arbor that fits in the tailstock and this is a ball bearing section. I use it for all kinds of stuff. It works great. What I have is this is a little big from what I plan on so I'll be turning some of that off there and the step that you see here this is pretty close to what I want and then the step down there is pretty close so I'm going to just start generating a shape and I'll check the wall thickness as I go so I'll bring this up I like to spin it a little bit slow when I see it turn I haven't forced it in a place I'll put a little more pressure on it. We'll turn this on. Looks like it runs good. I don't see anything out of alignment. It's uh, maybe about 1400. I'm going to go ahead and sand the outside. Uh, it's pretty smooth. I think I can start with 150 grit. Ready for some sanding sealer. I think the Paduke here is the nicest. I had a very unusual piece of maple laying around. That's really interesting, but all I got out of it was one little section right there. All right, I think this is going to go pretty easy. I'll go ahead and get a couple coats of this on, and I'm not sure what the final finish will be, but I'll let you know when we're through what I put on it, and uh, see you when it's ready to finish the bottom off. All right, we have one thing left to do, and that's to remove this tenon. Got my cold jaws set up. I'm going to pat it with this paper towel. And I'm going to bring them up against it. They all feel like they're hitting good. And bring the tail stock up. I hit that center pretty decently. Tighten this up just a little bit more. Let's see how it runs. It's okay, it's not perfect, but I think I'm going to go with this. Let's use this 3 8 bowl gouge. I think I'll run about 850 RPMs. Slow it down a little bit. There. I think that's going to be just fine. Well, here's my little dizzy glass. It's made up of 514 pieces of wood. They were scraps from other dizzy turnings that I have done, and I did not want them to go to waste and I never throw anything away. It's four inches in diameter at the top. It's five and nine sixteenths inch tall. The stem is almost an inch 
and I didn't want to make it any thinner than that. I don't think I could have held this together while I turned the rest of it. Maybe I'll try it sometime, but I wasn't going to do it on this one. The base is 2 and 5 eighths in diameter, and that is some of the Peruvian walnut there along with this top rim. So I finished it with three coats of sanding sealer, sanding in between each coat, followed by multiple coats of lacquer sprayed on. And of course, I used my abrasive paste and polishing paste to do the final finishing. And it's as smooth as glass, and I think it's a pretty nice finish. There's the inside. And that really shows you what that dizzy pattern looks like in there. I think if you looked at that long enough, it would hypnotize you or make you dizzy. I really like the simple pattern on this. I got a nice twist out of it with a, just a short distance, especially looking down on the inside. I always enjoy making these little dizzy turnings, even though they take a while to glue up. But I do other things while the glue is setting up. No big hurry. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And a special thanks to all my subscribers. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to my channel and you feel so inclined, please consider subscribing. Thanks again, and until the next time, I'll see you later.